1956, amid the Cold War's deepening divide, the M103 heavy tank rolled onto the scene as America's calculated reply to the Soviet Union's IS-3 and IS-4 tanks. The 65-ton giant powered through diverse landscapes at speeds topping 30 kilometers per hour, unmatched in agility and sheer strength. The M103's primary weapon, a 120mm rifled gun, made an immediate impact. Each projectile launch turned concrete defenses in enemy strongholds to rubble, demonstrating the tank's lethal efficiency against any barrier. Complemented by a 50 caliber machine gun and twin 30 caliber machine guns, it held the ultimate power to project unrivaled control on the battlefield. When the tank was first envisioned during World War I, the Land Ship Committee created by the British Army stipulated the creation of a heavily armored machine that just by its sheer size and weight would instill fear in the heart of the enemy. Although initially successful, the Allied forces soon realized such colossal vehicles were inconvenient. They were slow and had trouble overcoming the harsh terrain and obstacles of the battered fields of the Western Front. This led to the development of tanks of all shapes, roles, and sizes, including light tanks for scouting, medium tanks for a mix of firepower and mobility, and heavy tanks clad in steel and armed to the teeth to hold a position until the very end. This classification became the testing ground during World War II. The Third Reich introduced a wide array of tanks tailored for specific purposes, although the bulk of them were medium tanks, such as the iconic Panzer III's and IV's and the Panther tank. However, the furious armored clashes of the Eastern Front led to the creation of lethal, heavy, and mighty tanks that embodied total dominance when they appeared on the battlefield. This was the case with the Tiger I, Tiger II, or King Tiger, as well as tank destroyers like the Elephant. Weighing over 65 tons and armed with powerful 88mm main guns, these tanks were a force to be reckoned with. They could easily tear apart pillboxes and fortifications. Allied tanks, such as the T-34 and even the reliable M4 Sherman, were reduced to husks with a direct impact from these beasts, and could not engage them head-to-head -head and survive to tell the tale. With this in mind, the United States set out to develop its heavy-class tank to counter the sheer firepower and improved armor of the heavy German tanks. The U.S. Army introduced the M26 Pershing heavy tank as the war's end approached. Although not a true competitor against the Panther and Tiger tanks, it could fight them head-on and survive if the crew outsmarted the enemy. The Pershing was a considerable upgrade over the Sherman and its 75mm gun, as it sported a 90mm gun and thicker armor. Nevertheless, the new American Colossus arrived during the last months of the war and saw little combat in Europe. It was never used against Japan in the Pacific. As soon as the war ended and tensions rose between the United States and the Soviet Union, the military continued working on a new heavy tank design, with the knowledge gathered from the vanquished Germans. The Red Army did the same, leading to yet another leg of the arms race between the new superpowers. American engineers knew that Soviet tanks would be even more challenging to defeat than the German armored vehicles. They spared no expense, providing the armed forces with the best tank ever developed. Allied troops stood in stunned silence as Stalin's latest war machine, the colossal IS-3 heavy tank, made its debut during the victory parade in central Berlin. It featured sloped armor, wide tracks, and a 120mm caliber gun, more than enough to send chills down the spine of the American, British, and French advisors in attendance. While the British set out to develop the Conqueror heavy tank, the U.S. Army and Marines ditched their T-29, T-30, and T-34 tank designs to envision America's most potent heavy tank, their 120mm armored vehicle. The quest for a new breed of tank took on an air of desperation by the late 1940s. The Soviet Union was already parading the formidable IS-4 with its devastating 122mm cannon, leaving the American military strategists in a scramble for a countermeasure. The ambition was clear to forge a mechanical beast capable of breaching enemy lines, obliterating armored threats from a distance, and marrying the attributes of agility with impenetrable defense. Meanwhile, the Army and Marines nailed down the prototypes available to select one reliable platform. American engineers, melding the prowess of the T-29 and T-34 prototypes, birthed the T-43. Rooted in the lineage of the Pershing, this new Titan was sculpted in the forges of the Detroit tank arsenal by the year's end. It emerged pared down to a sleek 52 tons. It boasted an 80-inch turret ring, a nod to its predecessors, 
while reducing the crew to four to increase ammunition storage space. Riding on seven road wheels, the vehicle bore a ground pressure of 11.6 psi and 28-inch wide tracks, carefully balancing mobility. Powered by a 12-cylinder Continental engine, the tank generated 810 horsepower. Furthermore, the T-43 was protected by a frontal hull and turret armor over 5 inches thick. The main armament comprised a lighter 120mm T-53 rifled gun, a 50 caliber coaxial machine gun, and remote-controlled 30 caliber twins on the turret sides. Other elements enhanced the combat prowess of the vehicle, including a panoramic telescope, direct sight telescope, rangefinder, and lead computer. The June 1950 communist invasion of South Korea launched the U.S. into another major conflict in the Asian continent, the three long years of the Korean War. The outbreak of the conflict accelerated the T-43 program, as the Army and Marines were repeatedly pushed back by Soviet armor that was already superior to outdated M4 Shermans and M26 Pershings. In 1951, the Army awarded Chrysler a $99 million contract to develop the tank as fast as possible to deploy it alongside United Nations troops fighting in Vietnam. The first T-43 was completed in November and sent for evaluation to the Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland. The prototype showcased several mechanical issues that forced Chrysler to make substantial changes. The main gun and armor had to be updated, as well as the placement of several components. Some of these problems were never addressed, and the tank went into production as the war in Korea raged on. Still, the heavy tank did not see action before the armistice came. By 1954, Chrysler had delivered 300 tanks accepted by the military, with the official designation M103 Heavy Tank. In August 1955, the M103 was relegated to storage when facing ambiguous scrutiny of command standards. However, the tank underwent a radical metamorphosis after 98 were cleared for an upgrade in April 1956. Eight M103s found a home in the U.S. Army, while the U.S. Marine Corps adopted the remaining 220, transforming them into infantry support vehicles. Yet the heavy tank did not stay away from controversy. A House Government Operations Subcommittee's July 1957 report demanded an audit of the costly program. It questioned the haste in production for the Korean War, arguing its unsuitability for the nuclear battlefield. The rushed service of the M103 meant it didn't meet the needs of the U.S. Army and Marines. The upgraded variant, dubbed M103A2, featured an M14 ballistic computer, a new turret electric amplodyne system traverse with the turret basket, a stereoscopic T-42 sight, and a revamped 750 horsepower diesel engine that provided better range and top speed. Despite the efforts, the M103 remained far from being a powerful war machine. The vehicle had a total weight of 62 tons, a length of 37 feet, a width of 12 feet, and a height of 9 feet. For such a colossus, speed and mobility were a tall order. It could only achieve a top speed of 21 miles per hour and a maximum range of 81 miles. The main highlight of the M103 was its powerful 120mm gun and its wide array of projectiles, but even that could not offset the cost of a design that quickly became outdated when the military fully embraced the main battle tank doctrine. None ever left American soil. The tank remained in service until 1972, before it was ultimately replaced by the M60 tank, marking the end of America's last heavy tank. <laughs>